Welcome to the second part of the introductory module in Colibri and Network Security. My name is Dalian Tremere Pedersen and I will try to make this part a little more brief than the previous one. The theme of this lecture is infections and social engineering and what I will try to walk you through is um, the most important ways of, of infecting computers so it goes through drive-by infections and infections by running executable files and I will also touch upon the topics of social engineering and phishing. So drive-by infections is really when a user is visiting a website which contains malicious code and this malicious code might be uh, might then be installed on the user's computer. This is often because there is some vulnerability, for example in the, in the browser or in some browser plugins such as Java, which is not updated and through the security flow you can infect the computer. Uh, often these kind of infections happen either by, you can say, websites which are dedicated to provide infections, so it is, it is malicious, maliciously run websites that might be uh, um, they might attract users, for example, by, by having a misspelling of a popular domain name or by uh, having some content that some users want to access. Um, something that, that goes nicely with some search term and then you get into this website and, and your computer gets infected. But it might also be completely legitimate websites which are infected um, uh, through, uh, by, by third party criminals so, the, in, so the, those who are doing the infection actually has nothing to do with those running the website. But the, the site is being attacked and that might lead to malicious code being installed on computers who are visiting the site. And here the WordPress example that I mentioned on the slides are an important example of this. You can also have infections through executable files. So what happens is that when a user runs an executable file, um, a piece of malware or a piece of software is being installed on his computer. And there are different ways of doing it. One is by email, so you receive an email from, a, from a, a friend or from somebody you know, or it might be somebody that you don't know, uh, with some executable file. So uh, please open this file to see something. And if you click on the file, uh, you might install malware on your computer. Uh, if you have an antivirus program that is installed, of course you will, you will usually receive a warning. Um, so social engineering is used to, to let you bypass the warning. Then it can be through social media, so it could be uh, through Facebook, um, that friends or friends of friends are asking you to, to see something, uh, which is really about opening a, a file with malicious content. You can get it from a USB disk, or you simply download it from a website. When you, or if a user is downloading this file and he's trying to open it, often he will receive a warning from his antivirus system. Uh, at least in countries where antivirus is widely used, which is uh, quite common in Europe. Uh, so what you do is that you use social engineering, or not you of course, but the attacker use social engineering to bypass these antivirus warnings. Um, so the whole thing is about making the, the user eager to see something um, or to make him trust that, uh, that the information is, uh, is reliable. So one thing is that the user, one thing, one or two important things to observe is actually that the user often doesn't have sufficient knowledge to know how to act when he sees the security warnings. So people today are so used, that's my statement, to seeing security warnings or warnings about security, uh, privacy, or that an app needs to access something on your phone, and the people are used to saying yes. So often if you don't understand the information, people will say yes in order to, to be able to install the program and see the content that they want to see. Um, and the user decision might also be impacted by the content, for example, who is the sender and what kind of content is provided. So if you receive an email, uh, written in a poor language from someone you don't know, you most likely delete it. But if your friend is sending you, uh, what appears to be your friend is sending you a, a video link on Facebook and, uh, and you get the information that you need to update the flash player in order to see it, uh, some people will be more likely to say, okay, then we update the player. But basically it's the same that happens. So here we have an example 
of uh, how social engineering can be used. So um, Facebook spam message uh, is something you receive. It can either be from a, a friend uh, where somebody got access to his account or could be used his account for spamming. Um, that's one example. And then you open the, f uh, you receive the link. When you go to the link, it looks completely uh, like YouTube. But you get this information that you need to update your your flash player or whatever in order to see the video. And because you trust the sender and because um, you're used to saying yes, you might click OK, you'll run it despite of all the warnings and you will have a malware on your system. So here you can say, OK, the antivirus actually does a job because it wants you, but social engineering makes the user overrule the antivirus system so you, you get the malware installed. Phishing is another thing, and while it's not strictly related to malware, it's actually an important part of the sample crime picture, and therefore I also want to mention it. Um, so phishing is all about tricking people to disclose private information, which could be like social security numbers, it could be credential for authentication services. In Denmark we have what is called NEMID, I think translated to English it would be Easy ID, which is used for bank, which is used from public authorities, which is used to check your electricity bills, which is used for a lot of different purposes. Um, and one recent example of an email, so now said, oh, there is an error with your NEMID, this Easy ID card, so please send all your codes uh, to us for validation. And while few people do it, uh, there are always a few who does it. And therefore, therefore it works. Um, but it could also be access to emails, accounts, social media sites, etc. And I guess many of you have tried to receive this kind of email. Uh, please click on the link to validate your account or please provide us with the information because we need to uh, uh, do something with your email or uh, please check your Facebook or PayPal or whatever account. So the creativity is really, really big and the point is that some people um, uh, get tricked by it. So an example can be, this is from this uh, a leading Danish payment provider, an example. Um, take some time to read it. There is another example from, Pay from PayPal. Actually an example here highlighting what you should be aware of, or which pitfalls you could be aware of. So, that it's a generic greeting, dear sir, dear PayPal member, and so on. Uh, it's a, some kind of uh, urgency, so you, you have to do something as soon as possible, you have to do it now. And often you will see that there is a fake link, where a fake link it means that uh, it looks like, um, so the text, you can say the text that you read on the link, it's one thing that looks completely genuine, like in this case it's paypal.com, but when you move your mouse over it, you can see that it's actually linking to something else. But probably if you if you click on it, you will get to something that, that looks very much like PayPal in order to trick people to think that now they're actually uh, in the PayPal space. So this was the um, end of the second part. Please now take the quiz which is available at Moodle and uh, see you in the third part.